It is combined because the industry will take care of growth and growth is the only social, social security that we have. European industry can only be competitive if we have an advantage in the world, a, techno and a technological advantage. And this goes together with high-skilled workers, high-skilled, best-educated workers and good technology. I think we just need to consider what we mean by, by regulation and I think before perhaps just addressing the question I would ask, is regulation absolutely necessary? And to a degree of course it is, but I think therefore let's look at regulation, let's look at regulation that we need, smart regulation, and not start from the starting point that regulation is, is an aim or a good in itself. Right briefly, therefore, to the point of regulation, I would say unless that regulation is aimed at generating growth, jobs and investment and overall wealth creation, then it is not serving our, our EU well. I think that, uh, of course, we are now uh, looking at kind of a regulator, regulatory environment both in the EU level as well as at the national level. And, of course, it's the kind of economic operators, the kind of a total kind of impact of what kind of a regulatory burden or administrative burden is caused by I think that our legislation and I think the other administrative practices and I think that's where we are looking now uh, from the kind of different sectors and then trying to identify where are the the most burdensome pieces of legislation. We have done that uh, for SME perspective and we are doing that from sector by sector and then trying to identify that where we could ease or let's say modernize the way that we are regulating kind of business and environment. It should be much leaner and smarter. Oh, there are a lot really, but if I mention a few, I would say give uh, the industry a boost with innovation so that we will have smart industries in Europe where you will see that production and the digitalization will be more together to make a good customized production with zero defect and rapidly. Uh, the secondly is to have um, a dynamic labor market. We have a, a tremendous shortage of uh, people who are, are very well educated and I think we have to deal with that very quickly because uh, of the uh, demographic changes. Uh, we have a lot of people who are aging and uh, we have a lot of less people coming on the labor market. That is also a challenge. And last but not least, we should have smart regulation, less regulation and smarter, so that it will help the industry flourish and then Europe will flourish. I think, of course, because this uh, long-lasting uh, uh, economic recession has really hampered a kind of a demand and I think that kind of a home market is very down and I think that then comes a bit of course and I think that all the European industries really have to look kind of a, their global competitiveness and then comes certain kind of issues that where we are then either ahead of the game or we are then under a certain kind of a pressure for price especially energy uh, and I think that then all of the question of the regulatory environment whether we are really I think that uh, providing the best uh, kind of a business friendly environment for our companies but of course I think that there are certain good and then positive signs that I think that our exports to the kind of a, a global market is still going well but then if we look back now at the moment I think we are having very low level of investment so that the future productivity I think that there are serious concerns that, that we can keep really the pace and then I think that start to really renew and transform our industries. We have to bring together all political fields to make a coherent policy for our economy, for our uh, industry. We need to support innovation, we need to support uh, education systems and uh, to improve skills of people working in European industry to be advanced. And the European Parliament did in the last term a report how European industry can brought forward it for future with innovation, with best skilled workers uh, and the social dialogue is very important for that.
Like the current UK's manufacturing success, I think, came out firstly of what was a very bad recession for the UK and indeed other European countries. But I think there was a, out of this relative tragedy, there was a realisation that Britain needed to reinvest in its manufacturing base, in its technology, in investment, and of course in terms of what we call net trade, driven by exports. And that was, if I may say so, a positive coming out of the bad effects of the recession. And I think that re-emergence, that rebirth of British manufacturing is welcome. I think therefore it is the focus by government, by the media in support of that and of course by British manufacturers themselves who realise that this is a critical part of wealth creation and what we in the UK call rebalancing our economy. Yes, I think the problems are very easy to recognise because in Australia we have very similar problems. Uh, we're dealing with a sluggish economy coming out of the GFC, just like Europe. We're dealing with the need to be internationally competitive. And of course, we're trying to transition some of our manufacturing industries from more commodity products into more sophisticated products. Well, I think uh, Australia and Europe can both learn from each other. Uh, because of these common problems, uh, we need to get government policy settings that stop government from getting in the way, that uh, promote business activity, uh, to stop government impeding businesses being successful. Particular areas for Australia are productivity, uh, internationally competitive taxation, uh, energy policy. So I guess getting governments to understand that capital moves around, we need to have an attractive environment to attract capital. And uh, if we can do that, there's no reasons why business can't get on with uh, driving the economies of these countries out of the sort of malaise that they're in at the moment.